Hello and welcome to a Fat Boss class guide and today we are kicking it off with mages. Now if you'd like to see any of our other class guides there will be a link in the description to a playlist where they will be added as they are uploaded over the coming weeks. Now today we are joined by Charles who is a raider in quantum and a seasoned mage specialist. How are you today Charles? Hi Alex, I'm good. How about you? I'm very well, thank you. So what is your class all about in this? How's it like changed in any way? Uh, mages really haven't changed in uh, this. We're still the DPS that's usually OP in most patches. And, uh, most of our abilities are still there, but we have to choose some through the talents now instead of uh, having them instantly. Yeah, so well, that brings us lovely Lee on to the um, talents. So, what we're going to do with the talents, of course, how the talents work in Mr. Pandora is um, they're in different tiers and they're completely separate from your uh, specialization. So, um, of course, you get um, one tier at 15, one at 30, one at 45, one at 60, one at 75, and one at 90. And of course, we're going to go through each one and explain what it's all about, aren't we? So, that'll be great. Okay, so the first tier, which you get at level 15, is a mobility tier. You get the, cho the choice between Presence of Mind, Scorch, and Ice Lows. Basically, Presence of Mind it hasn't changed at all. It's still the spell yet that you used to be able to have in the Arcane Tree that makes your next casting uh, spell instant. So it's good for fights like Ultra Action, where you can get an uh, instant pyro before an Hour of Twilight, for example. The next talent, in my opinion, is going to be the best for most fights where there's movement. It's Scorch. It's a, it's a fire spell that you used to have in the fire tree before. You can cast it while moving. And uh, what's good if you're playing fire is that it's going to proc Ignite, which is our mastery, which is going to make it uh, actually not such a big DPS loss to move. And uh, the last talent, Ice Lows, is a uh, one minute cooldown. It's going to allow you, allow you to move while casting for the next two spells. Um, but I don't think it's going to be as competitive as the other two talents. You just pick Scorch whenever you need to move and presence of mind on the target dummy fight. Yeah, exactly. So like fights like Ultraxin, as you said, if where there's literally no movement, then presence of mind would be a lot better because, of course, Scorch, you won't be casting it. Is Ice Flows never useful in any sort of situation? or? No, I don't think we're going to be using uh, that talent. Maybe in a fight where you need to move for like five seconds, like every minute, you could use Ice Flows, but otherwise it's going to be Scorch. Yeah, I don't think many of those fights sort of exist. So, okay, that's wonderful. So you'd say Scorch for movement, Presence of Mind for single target. I'm sitting there doing loads of damage. So we're going to move on now to the level 30 tier, which is, uh, well, what's all this tier about? Uh, basically, we in this tier, we get the choice between two shields and one speed increase. The first shield is a totally new ability, and it's a really interesting one. Basically, it's going to be a shield that's uh, going to heal the damage that you took for the four seconds that shield was up, but it's going to heal it as a healing done. So basically, if you take 120k damage, you're going to get 120k healing when the shield expires. Really? What's the cooldown yes. on that? 25, 25 Just seconds? Just 25 isn't it? seconds, and it solves the GCD. So that's really OP ability. Ridiculous. And apparently, it's castable while stunned, frozen, incapacitated, feared, or asleep. That's... Yes, so okay. very overpowered ability. The best one uh, in this year, in my opinion. Oh my god. Okay, so we already know which one we're going to pick, but let's go through the other ones anyway. <laughs> the second one is Blazing Speed. In my opinion, the weakest talent of, uh, of this year. It's going to improve your movement speed by 150% for one and a half second. Uh, it's not very useful, just one and a half second. Maybe if it was a bit longer, it could be considered on a very heavy movement fight, but I don't see the, many people taking this for PvE environments. Uh, well, maybe like if like there's a point in the fight where you literally need to get to the other side of the room so you could like blink, then do that, like, and then you might get on the other side of the room really quickly, but otherwise, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's all right, but it's not amazing. And apparently you can only activate it after taking a melee or spell hit greater than 2% of your total health, or after you kill something that yields experience or honor, so... Um, yeah, it, it seems a bit too situational. Yeah, I don't see many fights where this spell is actually going to come in useful. But moving on to the third one, Ice Barrier. Uh, it used to be in the Frost Talent Tree uh, throughout the past uh, expansions, but now you can pick it and then, as an spec. Basically, it's going to shield you for a decent amount of damage, 50k damage at level 85. 
and uh, the shield is going to last one minute, and it's just a 25 second cooldown. So let's say if you know that uh, damage is going to come in in 30 seconds, you can cast it now. And when you start taking damage, you can just cast another one, and you're going to be able to shield a decent amount of damage. But then it's on the GCD, and I think Temple Shield is just way ahead of it. Yeah, the fact that Temporal Shield actually heals you back. So maybe Ice Barrier, it could be situational for some fights where there maybe the damage is like more over time, maybe. Um, so that would actually block more of the damage. Um, but otherwise, you'd say Temporal Shield then. Or Ice Barrier, let's say if you're low on health, Temporal Shield is not going to heal you if you die. But Ice Barrier might actually save you from, be kill from being killed. Yeah, exactly, because of course Temporal Shield doesn't actually shield you, it just heals you for the damage that you took in that last four, four odd seconds, so. Exactly. Okay, wonderful, so now we're going to move on to the third tier, which is the level 45 tier, and well, what's this whole tier about? Well, this tier is uh, all about CC. The, the first uh, ability that you can get is Ring of Frost. It still does the same thing, it puts a ring on the floor, and every mob that enters through it is going to get frozen for 10 seconds. It's uh, quite useful if you need to CC a pack of mobs during a boss fight, for example. This is a talent I took, it's my favorite one. But this talent, this tier is more of a free choice, depending on your preferences. Okay. This, the second talent is a whole new ability called Ice Ward. Basically, you're going to place that ward on a friendly target, and when that target takes damage, all the enemies around it, 10 yards around it, they're going to get frozen in place. So, maybe... It can get useful if you put it on a tank and you need to CC the ads, or if you if you want to proc a shatter if you're playing frost. Yeah, possibly. Also, it is actually only on a 20 second cooldown, and it lasts 30 seconds. So the potential is that um, you could possibly uh, proc it twice in a row, sort of thing. Yeah, this this should be uh, quite useful for frost if you want to proc the shatters, which uh, which going to increase your critical ch strike chances on frozen target by quite a lot. Mm, exactly. So what's the third talent in this tier? Well, the third talent is also a new ability in this expansion. It's called Frost Show, and it's like a mini deep freeze. It's got the same effect without the OP damage on it. So you're going to just freeze one target for eight seconds. So maybe on a fight where there's like one other ad or something, and you want to make sure that they're locked down, or you need to make sure you get silence out on one of the ads or something. But overall, would you say Ring of Frost then in this tier? Well, this is all about preferences. Ring of Frost is quite nice against a pack of mobs, but as you said, if there's just one mob you need to lock down, Frost Show would be quite handy there. Okay, excellent. So now we're going to move on to the level 60 tier, which is the fourth tier. And well, what's all this tier about? Well, this tier is really quite interesting. Um, we got the choice between Greater Invisibility, Cauterize, and Cold Snap. Uh, we already had those abilities available to us in the Cataclysm, but in different specs. Now we can pick which one we prefer. The first one, Greater Invisibility, uh, has a few effects on the, on the spell Invisibility. Instead of having the 3 second ramp up, it's going to be instant. And even more, it's going to reduce your damage taken by 90% for the first 3 seconds, which is really good. It's a bit like this brush in 2.0 now. Wow, that does seem really strong. So with that, you could possibly be taking things like an Hour of Twilight or even um, even an Impale or something on uh, Madness. Yes, definitely. The second talent that we have available is Cauterize, which is to be able to get in Fire Spec only before. And uh, basically what this talent do is uh, instead of uh, getting killed, if an attack would kill you, you just, you just get healed up to 50% of your health and then you burn for 40% of it. It used to be 60%, but now you can uh, just survive it. Okay, so even if you don't receive any heals in that ne in the next 6 seconds, you actually still stay alive with 10% of your health, of course, if you don't take any more damage. Yeah, and you could even combine it with stuff like Temporal Shield. So, for example, the damage that's burning you, you're just going to heal it up when it's over. That's ridiculous. That's really, really cool. Awesome. Okay, and what's the third one? The third one is a uh, Cold Snap. Unfortunately, it doesn't remove the cold on Icy Veins anymore, which used to be really awesome for DPS in a Frost Pack. But now it removes the cold of Ice Block, Frost Nova, and kind of Cold Spells, which are a bit like CC and survivability spells. Hmm. Uh, also, it grants you a 30% uh, heal 
of your health, but I don't think that's going to matter too much. And the ability is on a three minute cooldown. Yeah, so overall in this tier, would you say cauterize generally and. Uh, yeah, generally cauterize and uh, sometimes greater invisibility. Yeah, if you need to choose to fight in some way. But overall, an awesome thing like Cold Snap, I imagine, being fairly useful for PvP at least. Yeah, definitely. It, it's going to have its uses for the Frostback users. Now we're moving on to the level 75 tier, which is the fifth tier. And, well, what's this whole tier about? Well, this tier is about the Mage Bombs. Before, we used to only have Living Bomb available in the fire tier. But now we have three different kinds of bomb usable in all specs. Wow. So the, okay. first, the first one is called Nether Tempest. And uh, you can put it on as many targets as you want. And um, when you put it on the target, if there's an ad nearby, it's going to uh, deal 50% of uh, the damage to that ad. So it's going to jump around to all different kind of uh, mobs around you. So it's quite useful for AoE. You just put it on every on everyone and you watch it jump on to every ad. It's also good to know that uh, Nether Tempest is the highest single target uh, bomb at the moment because you don't have to let it expire. You can refresh it just before it finishes. So yeah. the dot runs. Yeah, because it works more like a like a, like a dot really. It works like I don't know, like corruption or any other sort of dot instead yeah, of it this being is more of a bomb. This is more of a classic dot. Yeah, awesome. Okay, and then the second one is Living Bomb, isn't it? Yeah, the second one, Living Bomb. So. The spell hasn't changed. You can uh, spread it to uh, three targets turtle uh, via Inferno Blast, and uh, you have to let this bomb expire. You cannot refresh it before it ends, otherwise you're going to lose too much DPS because the explosion of uh, Living Bomb is quite significant in your DPS. Mm. And uh, the last bomb that's available is a uh, Frost Bomb. Basically, when uh, this bomb expires, it's going to deal a lot of frost damage to the targets around the primary target so this is going to be the bomb you want to use if you have one primary target and let's say eight mobs around it yeah exactly so it's more of like a, a cc bomb rather than i'm just doing loads of damage bomb well it's going to be both because it's going to be i'm going to do a lot of damage to everything around it when it explodes and it's going to slow them for 70 percent uh for two seconds that's really awesome. So it seems like there's quite a lot of, um, like you get to choose quite a lot in this tier, don't you? There's a lot of variety instead of it just saying, yeah, you just have to pick this one. Like depending on what fight, it's going to be depending on what bomb you're going to pick. Yeah, this is really good. And uh, even if you're a fire mage, you can have the arcane bomb or the frost bomb, which is quite fun as well. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And moving on to the final tier, which is normally the most scary of tiers. Um, what's this whole tier about? Your big boy moves, I guess? Well, this tier is all about mana regen and uh, spell power upgrades. Uh, what it's going to do is, uh, is define the way that you're going to regen mana. And it's really interesting because it changes your whole gameplay just around that one tier. And uh, this tier isn't available to us at the moment, which is the reason why Arcane is no longer a viable spec in Dragon Soul. The first, right. the first talent that's available to us is Invocation. What it does, it's re it, it reduces the cooldown on Invocation to just 10 seconds, and uh, but you passively regen 50% uh, less mana. That means that you're going to have cycles of DPS where you do evoke then your DPS rotation evoke DPS rotation ideally it's going to be every 40 seconds because when you complete an evocation you deal 25% more spell damage wow okay so this does reduce the amount of mana that you get by a lot however if you, at least only you get 25% basically damage increase flat um, as long as you complete one every 40 seconds. So as long as you can kind of manage it with your mana, I imagine, this is like a really nice thing to take. Yes, if uh, basically this is uh, this talent is going to make you play in cycles of um, going through all your mana in 40 seconds. That's going to be optimal play. Awesome. Okay, then the next one is Rune of Power. I've seen you standing on these in the old beta. So what's all this all about? Well, this talent is uh, really interesting. It's a whole new spell, a whole new concept. And uh, basically, you place Rune of Power on the floor. You can have up to uh, two Rune of Power at the same time. 
So if you need to move, for example, you place uh, two of them on the floor before the pull, so you can move freely between both. Uh, the problem about it is that it still limits your movement quite a lot because you lose DPS by not being in one of them. Uh, oh, of course. When you're in one of those runes, you're going to have a mana region increased by 100% which is quite useful for specs like Arcane, where you want shitloads of mana regen. Mm. And uh, it also gives you a 15% spell power increase. This talent is really awesome on standstill fights, or fights where you don't have to move too much, so you can be in the ring of power most of the time. Definitely, that's crazy. That's like a constant evocation, and, and it does mean that you lose evocation if you have this move as well. You can't have evocation and this, can you? No, nah, you can't, but you don't need evocation when you have this talent because your mana region is just so insane. Mm, definitely, that's crazy. And of course, it only affects the mage. I've been trying to stand in them, trust me. But no, it only affects the mage, unfortunately. But yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah, and uh, moving on to the last one. The last one is a bit different. It's uh, it's a shield that you're gonna put on you, and uh, if you ma if uh, you manage to break that shield, you're gonna uh, gain uh, some mana and uh, spell power. You're gonna get eighteen percent mana, as well as a thirty percent increased spell damage for fifteen seconds. Um, wow! So this is gonna be more situational to use depending on if uh, you can take constant damage to break the shield because it's just a 25 second cooldown but since it's hard to have the shield broken at all time you we also get a passive that increase spell damage and mana region passively yeah but of course this um it says here that the um effect actually like uh, the passive doesn't work while the um the, while it's on cooldown the the ward itself is on cooldown so this this seems a lot more situational, doesn't it, in, in comparison to the other two? Yes, and it might be good for PvP. It, you know, we'll have to see, because evocation can be interrupted easily and you can't stand still in PvP. So I think a lot of PvPers are actually going to take in Condor's Ward. Yeah, definitely. So overall, you'd say for single... Uh, well, it's it's all a bit weird, isn't it, really? like The last one is kind of up to your up to you in regards to pvp it's either invocation or rune of power unless you manage to get the encanter's ward working somehow um it's all very dependent on fights isn't it yes if you manage to stand still quite a lot of time rune of power otherwise go for invocation awesome so moving on from talents we're going to be going into the specs and we'll cover them one at a time and we'll have like a a little look over each one of them not into too much detail but we're going to f start off with arcane so how has that spec changed in comparison to uh, cataclysm well before when uh, you would use arcane blast you would gain a stack of uh, arcane power and uh, that would uh, increase the damage done by arcane blast but as well as um increasing its mana cost but now that can stack up to six so you're gonna have to really work on your mana and damage output a lot more now holy the, shit that's a lot <laughs> so if you really need some burst damage an arcane is going to be able to provide that unfortunately at the moment we don't have the level 90 talents so we're not going to be able to sustain that burst for very long we're going to be able to get two three arcane blast at six charges but not more oh god so at the moment, it's it's some it's not a spec to go into. But how do you think it is, is actually at the end? Like once we get to level ninety, is it's, it going to be a viable spec? It's definitely going to be viable, and I think it's going to be one of the best ones if uh, the numbers uh, don't change too much. Okay, awesome. And is it still like have you obviously played this on the beta? So is it still a fun like spec to do? Is it or is it still like hit? arcane blast constantly because it sounds like you have to manage your mana a lot more than you did actually to do in cataclysm so it's like an extra level is there or well spells have also changed for example arcane missiles don't no longer consume the uh the charges but instead they uh, generate one so the way to uh, consume them is by uh, arcane barrage and um that spell has changed quite a bit because uh before it was just that spell you would use when you were on the move otherwise you would never touch it now that spell depending on how many charges you have for example if you have four charges it's going to hit four mobs so it's really oh, okay gonna be, it's going to be really useful for cleaving fights because that spell is really it's really really hard okay excellent so it seems like they've kind of given arcane actually something to do instead of just spamming one 
Yeah, so now Arkane have to manage the mana, cleave with the Arkane Barrage, and uh, we also have to keep the dot up. Uh, usually it's going to be Never Tempest. That sounds really, really cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that actually panders out in Mr. Pandaria. Huh? Um, moving on to Fire, how has that spec changed? Well, they nerfed Fire's AoE quite a lot because before you would be able to spread all your dots via impact to every mob around you. Now uh, there's a cap on how many mobs you can uh, spread the, your dots to and uh, it's not a lot. It's just three targets total. Oh, that's a bit shit. So no more of a powered combustion spread on 10,000 ads. Uh, I don't really know. How is it like... So have they only really kind of made it worse or has they, have they like given you something else to kind of make up for it? Have they given you like a better single target or something? Is it more reliable? Because I know it's quite a proc-based fire, isn't it? So is it um is it more reliable to play now or is it they just nerfed your AoE and that's about it? Well, they so nerfed the AoE, but they buffed the cleave. Basically, uh, the way we were able to spread our dots was via impact and every spell had a 10% chance to proc impact. Now, it's a spell by itself called Inferno Blast. It's on the 8 second cooldown, and you can spread all your dots with, uh, with that spell. So you're going to be able to spread all your dots every 8 seconds, which is going to make your cleaving really good, because all the targets around the boss are going to be able to have the dots rolling on them. That sounds like, well, at least they're giving you that, because I always felt that fire was always a bit like, play your luck a little bit. Of course, there was a high level of skill involved in it as well, but... If you didn't get any impact uh, procs, then that was it. You kind of just sat there like, I can't do anything, or, or pyro procs. So that sounds a lot better. Is this spec viable in raiding? Like, is it, like, because it sounds like with the cleaves, it's going to be really strong. Well, you were speaking about pyro procs, and uh, we also have a new mechanic that's going to help us with that. Um, basically, whenever we get a critical strike, we get a buff called heating up. And uh, what that tells us is that we just had a critical strike and that if we get another one we're going to be able to get the pirate proc and um, the thing about that new spell Inferno Blast that's able to spread our dot it's, it's got a second asset to it is that it's a 100% critical strike chance so when you see that bar feeding up you're going to have to uh, use Inferno Blast to get that crit instant crit that's going to be able to uh, force the pirate blast proc okay so it's a lot less kind of waiting around you kind of actually have a bit more control over it by the looks of it yes and uh there's even more rng redu uh, reduced in uh in mist because in Cata in cataclysm the way that would you would get ignite was uh, with your critical strike so every time you press fireball you would pray that it would crit but now ignite is procking off every spell so even if it's not a crit, it's going to proc. Of course, it's going to be a bit less powerful, but it's still there. Oh, excellent. So would you say that it's a, a they've the changes that they've done, has that made it a better spec, would you say, than it was in um, Cataclysm, or, or is it just different instead? You're going to... It, they removed the RNG part of fire, and uh, it's still a really interesting spec. So I, I really like the single target change. Of course, I'm a bit sad that I'm not going to be able to combustion spread on uh, a lot of ads, <laughs> but that had to happen. It was uh, overpowered. Now, moving on to the last spec, which you kind of have been condemning throughout the video, which is Frost. Um, what's going on there, then? Well, Frost hasn't changed much. Throughout the beta, they made us believe that Frost would be good because it was actually viable. But right now, it's just not competing, unfortunately. It does a decent DPS, but nowhere near as fire. Fire is uh, is really king at the moment. What would you say, um, like, has anything particularly changed with it? Because like, it sounds like you haven't really got that much many more moves, no. but surely they've given you something. Well, they did. There's uh, this whirly frost bomb that travels to the target. It's quite good looking, but that's it, really. <laughs> okay. If, so if you want a swirly you... bomb, then go frost. So if you like the pretty colours of WoW instead of like actually doing the most damage or anything like that or helping your team, go frost. It'll be fine. You look pretty. <laughs> so this spec doesn't sound very viable in raiding. So would you say like they haven't really made they they've kind of let frost down overall in um, in mists at the moment? Um, when we get to level ninety, things uh, might change, but I 
the, at the moment, at 85, uh, they did let it down, but that was expected. So they are all three of your specs. That's all pretty nice and done. So now we're going to move on to the glyphs. So um, what made? Because of course there are no prime glyphs anymore. It's just major and minor glyphs. So what major glyphs are any good? Well, uh, as fire at the moment, the the three glyphs that should be used is glyph of combustion. Why does it increase the direct damage, the duration, and unfortunately the cooldown by a hundred percent? But I think it's uh, quite useful to have that long combustion now. Mm, definitely. The other glyph you should be taking is a glyph of fire blast. Basically, the inferno blast spell is now going to spread living bomb uh, because if you don't have the glyph, it just spread the uh, ignite and uh, fire blast. But with the glyph, you get living bomb as well, which is quite useful. Awesome. And uh, the last one that I take is glyph of evocation. Basically, when you evoke, uh, you gain uh, sixty percent of your health. Uh, which is quite handy for the healers you just to self heal. Of course, definitely. Of course, this glyph is going to change um, with the level ninety talents. It adapts uh, depending which uh, talent you take. Yeah, I saw that if you have the rune of power talent, it just gives you one percent of your health per second while standing in a rune of power. So it just heals you up quicker if you're in a rune of power if you have this glyph, which is really really quite nice. Yeah, so that's. The three glyphs you should be taking if uh, you intend to raid uh, as a fire mage. Some other spell, some other glyphs that seem quite useful are, for example, the mana gem glyph for arcane, because instead of giving you three charges, it gives you ten. So it's really good if you have a really long fight as arcane. Yeah, that does sound really, really, really strong. But otherwise, uh, the the major glyphs aren't that great for PVE. Fair enough. Is it like the minor glyphs now are all pretty like jokey ones? Like as a druid, you can tame little critters and shit like that. Is there any that really stand out as kind of stupid ones or are unique in some sort of way? Uh, one that I like is uh, it gives us a new spell called Illusion, and what it does is uh, the effect of potion of Illusion, where you can transform yourself to look like someone else for two minutes. All oh, right. Okay. So you have that like permanently. You can like, well, not permanently, but you actually have that as a move instead. Unfortunately, it's thirty minute cooldown, but it's quite fun to have it as a move. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, like because that's what that's what the minor glyphs are all about. They're all about just having a little bit of fun. Like none of them really increase your DPS or increase anything else. It's just a, it's just a silly little thing, anyway. Yeah, and we also have um, some glyph that allows us to cast uh, polymorph on critters that last for twenty four hours. So you can have a whole army of critters polymorphed. <laughs> okay, why not? Why not? <laughs> and speaking of polymorph, you can just choose which uh, animal you want, like penguin, monkey, pig, bear, or anything you want. Wonderful. That sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool. Okay then, well that's that's all you really need to know about mages by the looks of it. Um, a big thank you, Charles, for joining us today and basically helping me through this. I've learned a lot and I'm sure everyone else has. It was a pleasure. It was, it was lovely to have you. So um, thank you for watching, guys. If you did like this and you'd like to see more stuff like this, then do give us a thumbs up. It does help us out a lot. And make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.